His name is Jesus. His name is Lord. His name is higher than any other name. Oh, his name is Jesus. His name is Lord. His name is higher than any other name. Oh, his name is Jesus. His name is Lord. His name is higher than any other name. Oh, his name is Jesus. Good morning, darling. His name is Lord. I know, I know. His name is higher. Than any other name, oh, his name is Jesus, his name is Lord, his name is higher than any other name, his name is Jesus. The Lord bless you for joining this morning, his name is Lord. I love this song. It's just singing in my spirit. Praise the Lord, Ruth. His name is higher than any other name. His name is Jesus. His name is Lord. This morning, the Lord bless you. Good morning, darling. Good morning. Oh, Abigail, good morning. The Lord bless you. Um, good morning. Joseph, praise the Lord. Emilia, good morning, honey. Your name is higher than any other name. Your name is Jesus. Your name is Lord. Oh, your name is Haya Saba. Good morning, honey. Than any other name, Lord. Your name is Jesus. Your name is Lord. His name is Haya. Than any other name, oh, his name is Jesus, his name is Lord, his name is higher than any other name, his name is Jesus, his name is Lord. Good morning. Oh, good morning, Hazli. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Oh, good morning, darling. Good morning. Charlie, good morning. Good morning. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless every one of you. I'm so grateful to the Lord for your lives. And um, I bless God. I bless God. I, I want you to um, now... Oh, good morning. Good morning, darling. Good morning on Periscope. Good morning on Facebook. Good morning, darling. Good morning. It's a blessed morning. It's a blessed morning. And we thank God. We thank God for um, this beautiful morning. Uh, we are literally in, um, in spring and um, we bless God for the change of weather and we bless God for all that he's doing. I woke up with good morning, good morning. Oh, Mami Dakwa, good morning. Amada, good morning. Uh, Theodora, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's a, it's a wonderful morning. Good, Rosemary, good morning. Good morning. Liz, Lisa, good morning. The Lord bless. I woke up with this song. His name is higher than any other name. His name is Jesus. His name is Lord. His name is higher than any other name oh his name is jesus his name is lord his name is higher than any other name his name is jesus <laughs> his name is lord hey. 
Your name is higher than any other name. Your name is Jesus. Your name is Lord. Listen, I want to bless God for every one of you. I want to honor God for your lives. You have no idea. I do appreciate God for all of you. I do. I really do. I appreciate him for his love towards you. I appreciate him for giving you and I life. I appreciate him for connecting us one to another. It is just a blessing um, to the goodness of the Lord towards us. And we are forever grateful unto him this morning. Yes, Audrey, it's a beautiful Tuesday morning. Yes, Audrey, it is. It is. And um, this morning, I want to bless God for um, the day. I thank God for waking us up. I really thank him for it. The fact that you are alive this morning is because your assignment is not fulfilled. Your assignment is not fulfilled. I bless God for your life, for the fact that you are in the land of the living, and you are asking yourself, why am I here? You are in the land of the living because your assignment is not completed yet. Your assignment, every one of us have an assignment from the Lord. And because your assignment is not fulfilled. Oh, good day, honey. Because your assignment is not fulfilled. That is the reason why you are still in the land of the living. The very moment God sees and God says that your assignment is done here on earth. That is the day he will call you home. But until then, nobody can take you out of this world. Nobody. I'm telling you, nobody. Because you have an assignment. You have people to bless. You have people, lives to touch. You have many souls to save for Jesus. You have, you have um, things to do for the kingdom of God and for the name of the Lord. And so... This morning, if you are in the land of the living, I want you to know that your assignment is not fulfilled. And so at every given time, you have a reason to lift up your voice and to say thank you to the Lord. And that is what we are going to do right now. I want you to join your voice with mine, your faith with mine. And let's bless the name of the Lord this morning. Can we do it? I believe and I know that you can. And so let's do it together, okay? Lift up your voice with me. Heavenly Father, we want to say thank you for this beautiful morning. For this is the day. This day was not made by demons. This day was not made by witches. This day was not made by principalities. This is the day that you, God, have made. And Lord, we choose. Yes, we do. We choose to rejoice because the day, you've made the day for everyone. But there are some that have chosen not to rejoice. There are some that have chosen to be angry and to be bitter and to be jealous. But as for us, we choose to rejoice and be glad and be glad fully glad of this wonderful and beautiful day you've given unto us lord i thank you for your visitations oh what a wonderful visitation this morning i give you the glory and i give you the honor father i'm asking that you visit your people as well they are watching me from all over the world lord all over the world this morning lord you know how you kept me up to the wee hours of this morning. For the woman that is in prison in Denmark, oh God, I want to thank you. And I thank you for the privilege you've given unto every one of us watching me all over the world. For availing ourselves to be used by you. It is just a great honor. Father, whatever we do for you, it is not because we deserve to do it. No, it is an honor for us to even be called to do this. And for this, we say thank you. We worship you and we praise your wonderful name this morning. Be exalted, mighty God, in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you this morning um, for um, coming and... Um, Yesterday, I um, got 
an inbox from a lady and it really assured me that what I'm doing is not unto man but it's unto God and that lives are being touched. Therefore, I am not looking at what all the, you know, the things that are coming from left and right. But I am focusing why? Because lives are being changed. Oh, somebody is watching from St. Martin's. The Lord bless you. Now, I want us this morning to take inventory of our own lives. Many a times when we go to church or where we are in a gathering and somebody is preaching and teaching, we are throwing the message to somebody. Oh, how I wish Sister, Sister Cynthia was here to hear the word of the Lord. Oh, I wish this message is for Cynthia. No, it's not for Cynthia, it's for you. And so many a times we go into God's house and when the word of the Lord is coming, we are throwing the word to somebody. But God wants us, why did God allow you to be in that place at that time? Why did God allow you to be watching me now? It's because the message is not for somebody else. It's for you and it's for me. And if you can open our heart and receive the word of the Lord and say the Lord work on me. Good afternoon, Nana. Good afternoon, honey. And you will say that, Lord, work on me, use me, do whatever you are doing. Somebody came up with a song a couple of years ago and says that, Lord, whatever you are doing in this season, don't do it without me. Whether you are reproving people, whether you are um, cleaning people up, whether you are fixing families, whatever you are doing, Lord, I'm asking that you don't do it without me. I want to be involved in what you are doing. And so what I'm doing is that I want to be involved. In what God is doing, touching the lives of people around the world. And so, spirits of the living God, gather your people, let your spirit blow them in from all walks of life because you know somebody needs this word this morning. And with, when all is said and done, we'll give you the praise and the glory for uh, calling us into this ministry. And Lord, sometimes it's not, I'm telling you, it's not easy, but grace. Is what keeps us moving. Grace is what enables us to do what we are doing. It's just nothing but grace, pure grace, the grace of God that sustains us each day and grants us the ability to do what we're doing. Now I'm still on the um, on the subject of jealousy, but this morning um, um, I want to talk to you and uh, say to you that allow the Holy Spirit to lead. Because if the Spirit of the Lord is leading you, then you know that what God is doing in somebody else's life, it is their turn. And that your turn will also come. So there is no need for competition. There is no need for jealousy. There is no need for uh, backbiting. There is no need for um, all these evil works that the enemy allows our flesh to embark on. There is no need for them. Because if the Lord um, is doing it for Sister A, then you have to know that if it's the same God you are serving, then it is just a matter of time. Because God works with us in seasons and in times. And so it might be somebody's time today. Let me say something. It might be your season. But it might not be your time. I'm saying it again. It might be your season. But it might not be your time. Somebody will say, why are you saying this? In every or in every year, there are seasons. We have the winter we have the summer, we have the fall, we have the um, um, the um, um, the spring. In other places, we have they have the summer, and then um, they have they call it the autumn. They have the autumn, and um, you know in in Africa um, we have this thing we call the hamatan, 
And so there are seasons. But the fact that the season is here doesn't mean it's your time. The fact that the season is here, it, for example, here it is um, springtime. Okay. Now, the fact that it is spring doesn't mean it's the season. But it doesn't mean that it is the time or your time for manifestation. Okay? And so in the calendar of God, everything works with times and season. And so you, it may be the season, springtime. And springtime may be somebody's season and time for manifestation. But it may be springtime for you, but it may not be your time. Now, Every one of us, I have said it, in the calendar of God, there is always a one day where God comes to you, visits you, turns your situation around, turns your moment around. And so what you have to do is to just align yourself to the spirits of the living God. Sometimes you may not even know that it is your time. And just like that, he shows up. And so... It might be the season, but it might not be your time. And so, wait. Patience is key. I became born again in 1983. I believe some of you were not born at that time. 1983. And I've waited since 1983. And I'm still in the waiting process. When you go to the airport... And planes are taking off. It is their season. So every airport is, you know, their season is for them to take off. But then the one that is sitting in the controlling room knows which plane's turn has come to take off. And so they will tell you that it's, um, your flight is at um, 10 a.m., for example. Now, 10 a.m., and you will realize that you have to check in. For example, you know, like people who, are, who travel all the way to Africa, you have to check in like two or three hours before the time. And so you check in in the airport, but you have not taken off yet. Sometimes you may even be in the plane. You are sitting in the plane and then they will tell you, the pilot will tell you, um, you know, I'm, I'm so sorry. Um, you know, sorry for any inconvenience, but there are uh, maybe five um, planes ahead of us that need to take off. And so, and so let's relax. And uh, when it's our turn, you hear the pilot saying, when it's our turn, we will take off. And so everybody's sitting in the plane, including the pilot. And some people are getting aggravated and some people are whining and some people are saying, oh my goodness, this is ridiculous. And, and I mean, you can whine and whine and whine. But the plane has not taken off. And if the pilot have not gotten the clearance to take off, it doesn't matter how much you scream in the plane. It's not taking off. And trust me, when you make an attempt to enter into the cockpit and you want to start pressing stuff because you think that you are running late and so the plane has to take off, my darling, your position will change. In two minutes. One minute you'll be in the plane. The next minute you'll be behind bars. Or they will, you'll end up in the mental institution for them to check and see if your brains are working. Huh. And so time. And I believe that there are people that are watching me. That it may be the season. But it is not your time. But if you can wait for your time, because when your time comes, my goodness, when the time comes for the plane to take off and the one in the controlling room says it's time to take off, it doesn't matter who is stopping the plane because the one in charge has told the pilot it's time to take off. Sometimes the plane will take off, but there will be turbulences. Oh, Jesus. There will be turbulences. I remember one time I was 
coming from Ohio to um to New York and um my goodness it was that day I vowed that I will do my best not to you know um fly early in the morning I don't know where we got to it was like just as we took off the turbulence oh my goodness the turbulence boop, 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 and then you see the plane dropping a little bit and that that time no we're coming from, sorry we're coming from minnesota and my two daughters were holding on to me it's like mommy what's happening mommy what's happening as a nothing as a listen it doesn't matter what is happening out there i said as for me i know that me and the two of you we are going home safely to, to, to our home. I said, we are going home. My youngest daughter said, Mommy, really? I said, yes. I said, doesn't matter what is happening up here. I said, we are going home. We will get home. You know why? Because we have an unfinished assignment. And so we are not going anywhere. Soon we are going home. And the plane, boop, 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 and it will drop. The plane will drop a little bit. And it will get up again. And, boop, 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 and then... All of a sudden, I realized my children were so scared. Oh, they were scared. And so, I literally opened my mouth and I said, Lord, for our sake, keep this plane and everybody in this plane alive and take us home safely. And guess what? The Lord did it. He brought us home. But in the evening, when we were watching the news, the same airline, an American airline that we took, in a different state, crashed, and the people in it died. But the same airline we were in, the Lord brought us home safely. And so I'm saying all this for you to understand something. That to some of you, it is the time for your manifestation. And because it is your time for manifestation, it doesn't matter what is coming your way, the turbulences, that is coming, you are still going to fulfill your assignment because your time has come. Okay? It's your time. Put your hand on your chest and say, mention your name and say, yes, it is my time. It is my time. Now, to some too, it is the season, but it's not your time. It is a season. And in this season, God wants you to get certain things out of your lives. Okay? He wants you to get certain behaviors, certain attitudes out of your life because he wants to use you. And if some of these things don't come out of your life, he cannot use you to the, to the maximum. And so he's using me by the grace of God to bring his word to you each morning that you and I, not just you, but I'm included, that you and I will search our lives, will search our heart, that there are things that need to get out of our lives so that God can use us mightily for his glory. And so we are still on the subject of jealousy, but I want to bring it under, you know, allowing the Holy Spirit to lead us and, and so that the things of the flesh may be removed from off our lives. Because if the Spirit of the Lord is leading you, then he's the one that convicts you. There are many people we are dealing with that the Spirit of God is not convicting them anymore. I mean, because they've gotten to a place, they are not even hearing God anymore because they are so deep into sin that they are not living sin and they are comfortable there. And so this morning, without wasting any time, I want us to take a, um, a look into the Word of the Lord. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3, let's look at it, okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 3. I want us to just look at the verse 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, the verse 3. It says, For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envy and strives and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? Is a question he's asking us. I want to read it again. For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envy and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal 
and walk as men is a question he's asking us. And um, Paul is speaking to the church in Corinth, the Corinthian church. Because the Corinthian church are now playing politics in church. Politics. And there is so much politics in church. I mean, whether we want to accept it or not, there is politics in church. And so they are, they are, they are, they are doing politics or they are embarking on politics because one person says, as for me, I'm for, P I'm for Paul. Another person says, as for me, I'm for Apollos. And so if Paul is standing there doing anything in church, I don't care. I mean, Paul can do whatever he wants. I don't care. But immediately Apollos comes and stands there. And Apollos is doing something. Oh, I am all for Apollos. Yes, preach on, Apollos. Preach on. Preach on. Oh, the Lord bless you, Apollos. And it's the same word. It's the same word of God. But because you are envious of Paul, and so when Paul is standing there doing anything, oh, Lord, I don't want to. Now, you are in church. You are excited. You are dancing. You are worshiping. You are praising. And just as the pastor says, we are blessed this morning to have a man of God minister unto us the word of the living God. And, and this man is, 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 is anointed of God and uh, this man is coming to preach to us. And then the man of God, everybody is eager. And then the man of God says, with a clap offering unto the Lord, let us invite um, Pastor Paul to come and minister. Oh! I can't believe this. Man, if I knew it was Paul, I would have just stayed home. Jesus, I would have just stayed home. Who want to hear Paul? Yeah. All that he's going to come and say is repent. That's all. You know, live a clean life. That's all. He's always talking about holiness. Please, forget about this Paul business. Just forget about him. Yeah, just forget about Paul. It's always about holiness. It's always about, forget about him. And so, even though you are sitting, but your spirit is shut. You shut your spirit. You don't want to hear Paul. But when Apollos is coming, why? Because Apollos, for example, because Apollos is not going to rebuke you of sin. Apollos is not going to tell you that if you don't stop what you are doing, you are going to hell. Apollos is coming to preach about prosperity, how God will bless you, and God will make you a millionaire, and God will make you a zillionaire, if there is anything like that, and God will make you um, a trillionaire, and you are excited, amen, amen, and you are not being reproved of sin, and so you rather choose Apollos than Paul. And that was what was happening in the church of Corinth. I'm going somewhere. And so, he says, For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envy, okay, envy and strive and divisions, you, you are divided and divisions. He says, Are ye not carnal? And walk as men. Let me add the verse 4. For whilst one said, I am of Paul. And another, I am of Apollos. Are ye not carnal? He says, who then is Paul? And who is Apollos? But ministers. Ministers by whom ye believe, even as the Lord gave to every man. I planted. Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. So then, neither is he that planted anything, neither he that watered, but God that gave the increase. In other words, it doesn't matter whether it is Paul, whether it is Apollos, whether it is Sylvia, whether it is Charlotte, whoever, it doesn't matter. Those people don't matter. They are, the, they are just vessels that God is using. And at the end of the day, it is all about Christ and him being crucified. And so if it is about him, then where is the jealousy coming from? 
then where is the envy coming from? That where is the division coming from? Because if we say that we are all serving the same father, then there is no need for us to be divided. I don't, I don't, I don't like, I don't, I don't, I don't like Sylvia. I just can't stand her. The question is, what has Sylvia done to you? But because you don't, you see, when somebody is into something and they are comfortable doing what they are doing, they don't want anybody to tell them they are wrong because they are, very, they are comfortable in it. They are comfortable. Somebody comes to me a couple of years ago and um, says that I'm in this relationship and... Um, I believe that the man is um, deceiving me. So I said, really? I said, are you planning to get married? I didn't know into details. And so I said, are you planning to get married? She says, yes, but you know, but the man, um, the man went back to his wife. That was when my spiritual antenna just went. I said, his wife. I said, the man is married? She said, yes. I said, is the man divorced? No, he was separated from his wife. And then the man said he was going to marry me, but he went back to his wife. My darling, trust me, I was not nice. I said, is your brain working? I said, my dear, are you sure your brain is working? She says, mom, why do you say that? I said, goodness, somebody's husband. And I don't know how many years. That this man have toiled with his wife. And the man comes and he's saying he, he's separated from his wife. And, and you want the man to marry you? I said, you are insane. Then she sits up. I said, you better sit up. I said, is the woman a Christian? She said, yeah. I, I said, oh God, I never knew you were this crazy. I said, anything... The woman opens her mouth and speaks it to God. That thing is coming after you. You know why? Because you are after somebody's husband. And you are wishing and praying that the man will leave his wife and come and marry you. I said, Jesus, may the Lord have mercy on you. She says, Mommy, but he promised me. I said, you know what? You need deliverance. I sat her down. I, I literally put some sense into her. Then all of a sudden, she woke up. She says, Mommy, I never thought of it that way. I said, now, think. The man is married with children. Did he even tell you what he did to his wife? Because most of the time, they will come talking about their wives or their husbands. But if you will hear the other side, you will know that the one talking to you is not guilt, is not, is not innocent. They have also contributed it to, to it somehow. I said, what is wrong with you? Now, right as I was talking to her, her phone was ringing and it was the man. I said, my dear, answer the call and tell the man that this relationship is over and that he should go back to his wife because you don't want any curses upon you. And someday when you have children, that curse is going to pass on to your children because any godly woman will pray that anybody who the wife or the husband is seeing and because of the person, there is havoc in their home. When that woman lifts up the voice, I said, heaven will respond as quick as anything. I said, run from this relationship. And to God be the glory. She did. She did. And today, she's married. Today, she's married. 
And I'm praying for her and believing God that the Lord will bless her womb with children. Listen. So Paul said, what is this thing envying and strive? What is happening? Because it is not about Paul. It is not about Apollos. It is all to, I mean, the whole thing is about God. And so you are, you, you are envious of somebody that is doing something for God. And instead of you doing everything in your power to help that person, because if God gets the glory, because you see, when we are not into the glory for ourselves and we are in the glory of God, then we don't care who does it as long as God gets the glory. We should not care who does it, whether it is Sister A or Sister B. You know, we are in churches, and when you do something and they are mentioning people's name to thank them. Oh my God, somebody's watching from Namibia. The Lord bless you, honey. Matilda, the Lord bless you. Now, if you are in a church and you do something, and they are mentioning everybody's name. Oh, thank you, sister. Um, sister, sister, um, Messi. The Lord bless you. And you know, you know that sister Messi didn't do anything. And, and sister Patience, the Lord bless you. And sister Charlotte, the Lord bless you. And you know you did something, okay, to help. But your name was not mentioned. My dear, trust me. It happened to me many times. There is no need for you to get out. Because if you know that what you did, you did it for God, then you don't want any recognition because it was not about you. It was you did it for God. And so it is better for God, okay, to applaud you than for men to applaud you. It is better for God to applaud you than for men to applaud you. I know I'm not talking to everybody. That is the reason why. There are millions of people that are not watching because this message is not for everybody. But the good news is this, that when this message is preached and I, by the grace of God, you know, all, oh, let me say this before I continue. All of you that is um, asking my God, I have like 700 people asking for friends' requests. Facebook only allows 5,000. And I've reached my limit. And so, don't say that, oh, I asked for a friend's request and she didn't, she didn't respond. No, I can't respond because I've, I've reached my limit. And so, the only thing you can do is to follow me on Facebook, okay? And it will still give you notification when I come on. And so, please, it's not like she doesn't want to accept me. No, no, I've gotten to my limit and I can't accept any more friends. And so, follow me on Facebook. It's the same severe blessings. Just follow all right, and you get a notification. This is just by the way. And so I am not applauded and I get angry and I get upset and I'm going on and on. It means that what you did, you did not do it for God. You did it for yourself because you want to be applauded. Good morning. Good morning. You, oh, from Arizona, the Lord bless you. It means that you did not do it for God. You did it for yourself because you want, you want the glory to come to you. But if the glory is not unto you, but you did it for God, then the scripture that says, whatever your right hand will do, your left hand should not see it. In other words, I am not doing it for people to see. I want God to get the glory. And so here he says, where there is envy and strife, are we not carnal? Are we not like men? In other words, we are allowing the flesh to lead us. Because the flesh is the one that says, you know what? I don't know why they didn't applaud me. I don't know why they didn't say, I did it. I don't know why they did not call my name. I don't know why. I didn't know why. You know, I did this for her. And when she was thanking everybody, she forgot about me. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Because you did not get recognition here. But God will make sure that he brings you recognition on a bigger platform. Oh, God. Listen to me, my dear. 
God will make sure that he will bring you recognition on a bigger platform. And then, you see, maybe in the church, there are like 200 people and you didn't get recognized among 200 people and you're upset. God is saying to you, my darling, that I don't want your recognition only in the sight of 200 people. I want to recognize you in the sight of over 20,000 people. And so, if you are not recognized here, forget about it. Forget about it. I am going to make sure. And so, all of a sudden, you do something that attracts the attention of your state, of your city, of your county. And before you know it, you are on the news. Oh my God. You are on the news. And you are on the news and the state is recognizing you. And the county is recognizing you because of a good work you did. And so instead of you receiving recognition in the sight of 200 people, God now brings you a recognition in the sight of millions of people. Which one do you like better? Because if you get the applause of men, God cannot give you the applause of millions. Because when God wants to applaud you, trust me, he doesn't do it in secret. Oh, no, 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 no. He doesn't do it in secret. <laughs> Not at all. He does it where millions of people will be looking at what he has done in your life. I had no idea that my going back and forth and doing God's work, I had no idea that there was somebody paying attention. I had no clue. I had no clue that somebody was paying attention. I was here when I, I got a phone call from a lady and says, oh, we are honoring the Liberian community. It's, and I'm not a Liberian. I am not a Liberian. The Liberian community is honoring people who are effective in the kingdom of God, who are changing lives in the kingdom of God. And so in the meeting, somebody brought your name up. I said, me? The woman said, yes. Somebody, I said, who? She said, I'm not telling, but somebody brought your name up. And at the end of the day, they had you know, this fancy award show, and they gave me an award. And I'm saying to myself, well, men are giving an award. What is heaven saying? You get what I mean? Men are giving an award, but what is heaven saying? And so we, 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 we don't have to come to a place where this one is jealous of that one and that one is jealous of that one. It's not worth it. Let's look at another scripture with me. Okay, let's do that. Yesterday we looked at Galatians chapter 5. I want us to look at the verse 26. Let's do it. Galatians chapter 5. I want us to look at the verse 26. All right, let's do it. I want to read it in a different translation. So let me get the iPad so I can read it in a different translation. All right. I will worship you. <clears throat> Lift you high above the earth and the heavens. You are Lord. Ay, 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 ay. You are Lord. Yes, you are. All right. Let me read from verse 24. Galatians chapter 5, verse 24. And they that are Christ. Oh, this is strong concordance. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. Verse 25. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Verse 26. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another Envying one another. Oh my God. The New Living, the New International Version says in verse 20, 
4. Those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying one another. Let us not do it. Provoking Hannah, good morning. Provoking one another. Because if we are in the Spirit, if we are in the Spirit, we will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. The desires of the flesh, including fornication, adultery, envy, strife, jealousy, unforgiveness, resentment. All these things are the works of the flesh. But if we are in the Spirit, walking in the Spirit, how do we walk in the Spirit? We walk in the Spirit by allowing the Word of the Lord to control us. We are being controlled. We are being motivated by the word of the living God. In other words, we allow the word of God to shape in our lives. All right. So the word of the Lord says, thou shall not kill. It's literally not. Of course, I'm, I mean, he's talking about physical killing. But I believe it's also talking about spiritual killing. Why we kill the spirit of people. We kill the joy of people. We kill the, um, the, the enthusiasm of people because we are so jealous of them that we are doing stuff to hurt them, intentionally hurting them. And we dump in their spirit. Why? Because we are so jealous of them that we cannot take it when God is doing anything in their lives. We get angry. We get frustrated. We want to, we want to destroy them. We don't want to participate in anything they do. I was talking to the church in Virginia this past weekend and I said there is no need for us to be jealous about anything and anybody. We come to church and uh, we come just to show off and cause people to be jealous of what God is using us to do. We come to church and you know they were laughing. And I said, we come to church and we are dressed anyhow. And we want to come and show our ATM. And oh, and uh, they were on the floor. And somebody, were, somebody said, what is ATM? I said, it's not the card, the machine where you go to the card. Your ATM is your African trademark. Your African trademark is your big behind that God gave you. And your big hips that God, it's a trademark. It shows that you're an African. Hello. And so we come to church, somebody's laughing. <laughs> we come to church and uh, we, want to, we want to show our African trademark. And we have this tight dress on. And you know, you are standing there leading worship. And you have this tight dress on. And you're behind, oh God, your bazooka is so huge. And can you stop laughing for me, please? Your bazookas are so huge. And your hips are so huge. And you, I mean, and you have this tight clothes on. And you come and stand there. And when the Spirit of God touch you a little bit, all your earthly goods will be showing. I mean, they were, they were laughing like the way you are laughing. Okay. And you have this tight clothes. I mean, the clothes is so tight. Tight, tight, tight. And, 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 and your... <clears throat> Your, listen, the African trademark is serious. <laughs> and and, and your, 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 your chest, I mean, you know that you have double D, 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 D. And, and you come and the thing is so, the top is so tight. And, and you jump, you, I mean, just one jump. You are too excited and just one jump. And the bazooka just flies out and, and they have to run and cover you. Do we need all that in that? Will you stop laughing for me? Do we need that? We, do we ne really need all that in the house of God? No, we don't. Because if we say we came before God and we are serving a holy God, oh, then let's, let's, let's do it right. Let's do it right. What is going on with all this envy and strife and all this unforgiveness? What is it? And sometimes you are envying somebody 
who you have no business envying. You don't even know what the person is going through. And we are so much envy. We are envying them. Oh, we are envying. And we want them destroyed. We want them killed. Oh, we can stand them. But you have no idea that behind that makeup, oh, behind that mascara, behind the Mary Kay, behind the Mac, behind the, the, um, the Estee Lauder, behind all these things, behind the Bobby Brown, behind all this makeup are scars that you cannot see. Why? The person took time to clean the face. There are scars, black spots all over. The person put the foundation on. I'm going somewhere and I'm going to let you go and we'll continue. The person puts foundation on. And then the person have a concealer on. <laughs> And the person put on the powder. And when they finish, they have mark, have this thing, they spray their face with it. And so you look at the person and you are so envious, you are jealous of the person. Oh my God, I can't stand this woman. She's so beautiful. I mean, somebody's beauty alone can make you angry. I, I mean, look, I mean, and they are jealous. They are so jealous of you. But you have no idea. That behind all that makeup are scars. The person is going through issues in their marriages. The person doesn't even have money to pay their bill. The person is literally becoming homeless. The person is, 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 is fighting legal battles. You have no idea. And you are envying the person. And the person herself knows that she's going through so much. I did this in Maryland. There is no need for us to envy anybody. No need. To be jealous of anybody, no need. I want to show you something and I want you, you to pay a particular attention here. If not, I will just leave it and... Um, continue when the Lord opens the doors of life tomorrow. I think I'll do that for the sake of time. Behind all this, behind all this, there are scars. I intentionally did not put so much. Look, you see, there's a, a bump here. There are scars here, okay? Behind all this, there are scars. And some of the scars are not physical. Some of the scars are emotional. Some of the scars are psychological. And people are going through so much. And yet, because they have makeup on, you think that everything is well. And you and, and 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 they are envying you. They think that everything is well with you. And somebody is so jealous of you, they will wish that they wake up in the morning and they will hear that you are dead. That's their wish. But what they don't understand is that behind all this, you are wounded, you are disappointed, you are hurting, you are hurting. And yet, somebody is sitting somewhere envying you so bad. They are so jealous of you. But because you have not told them what you are going through, they think this woman is well. Everything is well. Sometimes the reason why they go places and they are quiet 
It's because they are going through so much that they, they don't even know who to share the problem with. Let us not be jealous of one another because it's not worth it. Whoever you are, God created you so beautifully. You are in a class all by yourself. You are uniquely made. Look at you. Your eye is not the same as the eye of your sister or your friend. Your nails are not the same. Your structure is not the same. God created you perfectly. There is always a puzzle that you alone can fit. <laughs> I'm saying it again. There is always a puzzle that you alone, a missing puzzle that you alone can fit. And so God made you in such a way that you are the only one that can fit that puzzle. And so, don't see yourself as nothing. And that you are jealous of somebody else. Oh, I wish I'm like Sylvia Blessing. Oh, I wish. My darling. There are things that I have been through. And God gave me the grace to go through it. That somebody went through the same thing and did not survive. Oh yeah, I believe that. You are going through something right now that somebody went through the same thing and did not survive. The person ended up in a mental institution or the person is dead. But you are going through it and you are still strong. Why? Because the Lord has given you the grace to go through it. Because at the end of the day, your assignment is to bring somebody out. And so God is giving you the grace to go through it. That somebody will come with the same issue. And because you went through it, you be able to hold the person's hand and bring them through. Don't ever be envious or jealous of anybody because whatever God has for you is yours. Nobody can take it from you. Paul said where there is envy and strife and fightings among ourselves, it shows that we are carnal and that we are not walking in the, in the spirit, but we are walking in the flesh. He says, let us walk in the spirit, allowing the spirit of the Lord to lead us. You wake up in the morning, Holy Spirit, what do you want me to do today? And he will drop things into your spirit, man. I've said it before and I'm going to let you go. My husband and myself and uh, my child, we've been homeless before. Homeless. We were homeless for one year. One year. In America, yeah, homeless for one year. And when we were going through it, I was like, Lord, I cannot believe that we are homeless. I can't. I was not working. My husband was not working. There was no money coming from anywhere. We were homeless for one year. Now, what I didn't understand was that the Lord, whilst we were going through, he, gave, he was giving us the grace to go through it because God knew that he has called me to do this, this thing I'm doing. That as I go through it, and I ask him for his grace to go through it, that somebody may be going through the same thing. And I can tell the person that if God brought me out, the Lord will bring you out. Encourage the person to have hope in God again. But when I was going through it, it was not easy at all. It was tough, humiliating. But the interesting part of this whole thing is this. Whilst we were going through it, nobody even saw that we were homeless. Why? Because the Lord covered our nakedness. 
and that no one except the family that took us in and took care of us for one year except the family not even people in our church knew that we were homeless for one year because the Lord covered our nakedness what am I saying to you there is no need for us to be jealous of anybody. Whatever God has made you to be. Cherish it. Somebody will say, well, ah, I don't like this nose God has given me. Man, I wish I had a small nose. He's the only one who knows why. He gave you the nose he gave you. I have come to be so comfortable knowing that my life is in God's hands and that he will do whatever he will do. Because at the end of the day, if I say that I am serving God, then I cannot have my own way. I have to put my life in his hands. And whatever happens to me, I know he permitted it. Because if God had not permitted it, we would have never been homeless. He permitted it. But in his permission, he also made a way of escape for us. What am I saying to you? You are in the hands of God. Therefore, there is no need for you to look outside as to what God is doing in somebody else's life. Look into your own life and believe him that you will do the impossible in your life. How do I stay as oh my darling stay right there in his hands. How do I stay in God's hands is because I trust him. I do. I trust him that he's able to take care of me. I do. I trust him. I shared with you when I came on earlier I got a message from a lady I've never met. And um, this really gives me hope to know that what I'm doing is blessing countless people around the world. It might not bless everybody, but there are people that are blessed by the grace of God. And I want to read something that a lady sent to me. And I want all of us, as the body of Christ, to lift up prayer for her. So that when you go on your knees, you will lift her up to God as well. Okay? You will lift her up to God as well. For the sake of... Um, confidentiality I will not mention her name but I'm reading what she sent to me and I want every one of us all of us every one of you watching me when you go on your knees I want you to pray for her hello mommy God bless you my name is I leave it out I have been following your teachings on Facebook and my life has really changed I am watching you presently in prison in Denmark but will soon be out please I want to beg you to pray for me for God to have mercy on me I have never lived I have never lived a righteous life but now I have given my life to Christ so please go before God in prayer for me and God will bless you also pray for my children 
I'll mention the name of the children. Cynthia, Sandrine, and Sh Shakina. I trusted a friend and she betrayed me, which I am seven, a four years and six months imprisonment, which will finish in June. I have learned a lot in your teachings and my children also are following you too. So pray for me. I need God's direction even when I leave from here. She's in prison. And then she says she's on WhatsApp. And so if I can give her a call, and, and I'm going to call her if I can give her a call. What I did not know when I was just thinking, why do you want to do this? You know what? I mean, this is not about recognition. Because by the grace of God, you are all over the place. There's, I, you don't have to do this. I, but then my inner spirit is saying there are people out there that need to hear. And so listen, before I let you go, I want us to, wherever you are watching me from, corporate prayer is very powerful. I want us to lift up this woman before God. She's in prison in Denmark. And in prison, I don't know how this woman watches me in prison in Denmark. The work God has given us to do, if we can only do it faithfully, there are lives that need to be touched. Let's pray for her, can we? Father, we pray, lift up your voice with me, please. Father, we pray for this woman in prison and we pray for her three children, daughters. Oh God. Whatever took this woman to prison, Lord, we are asking for mercy. She's asking that we should pray that you will have mercy on her, Lord. May you have mercy on this woman for the sake of her children. Oh God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. May you hear the cry of her mother who has been betrayed, and because of betrayal, she's in prison. There are some that are in physical prisons. There are some that are in spiritual prisons. Oh, God, may your delivering hand reach out to this woman in Denmark, and may you give her the peace that you alone can give to her. Turn her life around, her children around. Wipe away every tears from this woman, and Lord, you are the God of many chances, not the God of a second chance. You are the God of many chances. Give this woman more chances, oh God, and bless her with your peace in Jesus' name. We bring her under the blood, her children under the blood of Jesus. May every voice that is speaking against her, we shut that mouth in the name of Jesus. Anyone, my God, that has lifted up themselves against this woman and against her destiny and that of her children. We silence in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, I pray whether this woman likes it or not, Father, make this woman a great evangelist for you. Make this woman a woman of God for you. May this woman rise up. And may she speak your word. May she, my God, speak deliverance to others. May she bring hope to others. Oh God, you have given this woman grace to be in the prison for four years. And in the prison, you brought your word to her. As she gets out in this month of June, Lord, make this woman a great evangelist for you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you. Puts your hand together. You are in the hands of the Lord. In his hands, there is mercy and grace and compassion and good health. In his hands, there is security. In his hands, there are riches and peace. Outside of God's hands is nothing but trouble and pain. Therefore, I submit to you, stay 
in his hands. Don't be in a rush to get out. Stay right there in the hands of the Lord. The Lord bless you. We are in the um, Easter season. And I, I pray for you that you will remember what Jesus did for you. The sacrifice he did for you and I. And you will behold the blood that was shed. The many things that were done to Jesus. Men spitting on him, beating him. And yet, he did it for you and I. Listen, forgive somebody. Because for this reason, Jesus came and died. Forgive. Whoever has done anything against you, forgive them. Because when you forgive them, the Lord will also forgive you. Forgive them from your heart. Let them go. Release them. It doesn't matter what they did. Yeah, they did something bad, bad. Yeah, they did. But the good news is this. How long can you hold on? How long? Forgive them. Let me pray for you. I received the blessing, Victoria. If you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, then I want you um, to reconsider. Okay, think about it, consider it. This is the time for you to give your life to Jesus. And so I want you to lift up your hand with me. Say, dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart, be Lord over my life. Forgive me of every sin that I've done. Anything I've done, forgive me. Wash me by the blood in Jesus' name. Now, if you pray this prayer, I believe that you are born again. I want you to look for a Bible-believing church, whichever, because we are, those of you watching me, you are scattered all over the world. I don't know where you are, but look for a Bible-believing church. Oh, the Lord bless you as well. Look for, oh, she's making me cry. Look for a Bible-believing church. And I want you to go to church and, and, and serve the Lord. Be in a local church. You know, there are many people who don't like, I don't want to be in a no church. Listen, listen, it is not God's will. For you to be all over the place and don't belong to a church. I want you to belong to a church. Please, look for a church and belong to a church. Belong to a body of Christ. Belong. It is good to belong. It feels good. It feels good, okay, to belong. And so belong, all right? And the Lord bless you. I love you with the love of the Lord. Until... Until I see you and I see you, know that with God, all things are possible. I return the same love to you as well. I love you back with the love of God. I love you back. I do. I, I do. I love you. I love you back. I do. I send the same love to you as well. Whatever word you have received today, hold on to the word. Don't let go of the word. Hold on to it. And um, ask the Lord to help you to be a doer of the word, not just a hearer, a doer of the word. And I want you to share the word. Share it on your page and let other people benefit from it, okay? There are others that are not friends with me. There are others that are not following me. And so they don't hear this word. But though this word is not just for you and I. It's for the world. It's for the body of Christ. And so share it. To as many people as you can share it with. And um, um, ask them. Let them follow. Because if they are following. Then when I come on. They can also come on. And they can also share. And they can also share. And they can also share. And then on and on and on we go. To the glory of the Lord. I've made up my mind. I'm not stopping. All the way for Jesus. All the way. Make up your mind as well. Say to yourself. I'm going all the way for the master. Because at the end of the day, there is a crown for you and I. I love you with the love of the Lord. Until I see you, when I see you, know that you are so special and uniquely crafted by the Lord. Love you. Bye. Until then. This is Sylvia Blessings. 
um somebody i said somebody said i are you sure you are so your blessings i said yes i said yes the person says oh uh, no 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 that's not so your blessed i said my darling this is me and then when i started talking oh yeah the voice so i said wow interesting i have a unique voice that wherever I go, even when people don't see, they know this is Sylvia Blessings. And you are unique as well. Enjoy and um, celebrate your uniqueness. Celebrate it. You are unique, very unique. You are not like everybody else. And enjoy your uniqueness. And as you enjoy and as you are proud, not in a bad sense, but as you are so proud of the God you serve, that he created you so unique, you honor him. He gets the glory, but the blessings comes to you. The Lord bless you. Until next time.